guys welcome back okay i have a change up on my videos i said in my community tab that i was that i was going to put up the video i have of what happened to the ring and yes i did find out who sent the ring and um it was not sent by a nice person and that video is going to come up this week but i had a lot of editing to do in it so i decided to put up something even better. Everybody's been asking me, when am I going to start teaching again? Guess what? It's today. And I want to thank David Wong. He is the beautiful colorist for this picture. And it's by Kirby Rosanis. It came from his book. And I don't, it may have been transferred to another piece of paper. I could be wrong about that. I don't see edges, like book edges um, on this. So he either maybe took it out of the book or copied it onto better art paper. I was very impressed with this. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, that's, that's, he's really good. And he is, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash him at all. <laughs> but his picture led me to a really good lesson because he, he backlit this picture or was trying to backlight it. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit about backlighting and where he went a little astray on it. But his going astray is immediately fixable and not that bad. <laughs> so he did a really good job with this. Now, my printer wasn't printing. I don't know why. My son-in-law is going to be here um, in a couple of hours and... He'll fix it for me. So I couldn't print this picture out. So you get me pointing at things on here to show you where he went. I'm going to get a pen so I can point. Okay. Um, this picture of the panda fox, he said it was backlit. I see where he backlit and he was right about some things. And then he went a little bit astray with it. Remember... Lighting is very important and deciding at the beginning of the picture how you're going to light the picture is probably one of the most important things about doing art. You have to have a plan, um, your, your color scheme, your, and the, especially the lighting. It should be uh, determined immediately before you even put your pencil to the paper where your light source is coming from. So he did that and he wanted it to be backlit. Now, th this is not his fault, um, David's fault, because he's working from a coloring book. And he, Kirby does a lot of lines on his paper. When he does his books, he will add in lines where he thinks shading should go. It drives me crazy because leave it blank or shade it properly. Don't put these little lines in that colorists can't get rid of when they take artistic liberty. So Kirby had already shaded this slightly backlit. And the light when it's backlit is coming from the back, which means everything in front is shaded. Okay, that's the, the glory of a backlit picture is you take your emphasis from the foreground, which this is the object of the picture, okay? And you sort of highlight your negative space, which is all of this space back here. And this would be brighter than this, okay? Unfortunately, well, it... it it might it looks kind of underdone over here, so it might be premature, um, or he might be using the white of the paper to do the snout, which never works out very well. You can kind of see where there's no uh, pencil on the face. If this was going to be a bat lit picture, okay, instead, see over here, it's backlit. You see how the white is going all around the darkness of the tree. And there should be the same up here. Uh, the, you know, in a realistic picture, there wouldn't be a heavy line up there. Oh, it's going out of focus here. Okay, there wouldn't be a heavy line 
going there in, you know, a sketch picture. You would just sort of let the edge go off the edge um, into a soft curve. It's being backlit, I would imagine, by the sun because it's outside. So, of course, it's backlit by the sun, which means the sun is setting and it would be a, a low horizon. The light would be coming in from right about here and it would be a little bit darker up there. I mean, that's artistic liberty. You can, you can bring it where it's light up here. It's a little bit harder to demonstrate in a drawing that it's backlit like that, but it's okay. He has his light in the right place going on the tree. He backlit this, you can see it right here, the white, that would be backlit. The light is coming this, you know, in, you know, towards you and the backside is lit. Where he went a little astray is the face. Why is the face got the light coming directly at it? So now he has light coming from two different directions. Now over here is a very good example of a backlight on how dark you should make the panda. And I know you lose detail, but that's nature. When things are in shadow, you don't see detail. You're not supposed to see detail. He's got a light line going over here, which is pretty if it was front lit. <laughs> so he demonstrated this being very curvy and round, which is perfect. But the light is still coming in from different, too many directions to make it look believable. And I'm not talking realistic, I'm talking believable. Um, even on the tail, he's got the light coming in over here and has the light going here. He, this should be really dark because you're not getting forward light. So all he needs to do now is put in the proper shadows. I told him he did a really good job. Uh, this is absolutely nothing. He got his shading perfect. He picked his colors beautifully. It's just that he needs to fix his light. Now, the background. The background, now this is a Kirby Rosanna's book, and while I love Kirby's um, artwork, I don't like his paper. So it's very smooth. So it's really hard to get a proper um, smoothness on it because the paper is so smooth it has no tooth. It's not going to pick up like multiple, multiple layers that you really need for a background. So a lot on here, I could see his strokes on here. But if he goes in and sort of darkens around, I'm sure it could take another layer and then leaves all of this light, it'll be much more believable. I would like to see him have more shadow on the snow because it's a tree and there's gonna be a lot of shadows in a tree, always. So I'd like to see a distinction between, you could see it on the bottom. Um, I'd like to see a distinction between here and here. This is the ground, this is the fox. Go much darker. This, this is backlit and you can put in the darkness, a distinct shadow going underneath the fox. And this is a little bit light for something that's backlit. But all in all, he did a great job. And I, what I recommend is to go and look at photographs that are backlit. Once you see what I am talking about, like, oh, it really, the face really is in shadow. There's no great detail in the faces like there would be as if the light was coming at it. So... That's what I'd like to see him do. Again, he did a really marvelous job in getting the colors right. And it's a very interesting picture. I also love pandas, uh, panda foxes. They're so cute. So I found this in the Facebook group. He had just posted it. I haven't been in the Facebook group in ages. I just happened to stumble upon this in my feed. 
And I was like, oh, it's coming from my group. And I went in there and I took a look at some of the pictures that people have been doing. And I found another backlit picture that I wanted to show you. Before I move on, okay, I found more information on David's picture. It was on Spring Hill Gray 67 pound vellum Bristol. Um, General's white charcoal stick, Brut Funner square pencils, one of my favorites. Brut Funner macaron uh, colored pencils, Prismacolor. Uh, and he used lavender, uh, well, spike lavender oil and a Prismacolor colorless blender. So he should have plenty of tooth. That's the good news. He's not working directly out of um, Kirby's book. Uh, this is great because keep going, David. You're not done. This is going to be beautiful. Okay, so now I'm looking for another one. Oh, they're so pretty. Look at these pictures that my group has been doing. And let's find... The other one I've gotten permission oh gorgeous I haven't gotten permission for all of these but Helen look at that skin beautiful and another one of Helen's ooh When was this written? August 17th in 2020. Okay, guys, keep this in mind. Listen to what I am saying and look at this post from August 17th, 2020. It is now 2023. Read that. And then we are going to discuss the ring. Look how talented these people are. Oh, Cindy. Of course, Cindy's going to do something adorable. I hope this is actually picking up and not... Because I have my... Okay, this is... Sharon Myers. Um, we're getting closer because it's Sharon's picture I'm looking for. And beautiful... Girl and Fox. Nice. I hope nobody complains in my group. You put me on camera. You guys did a great job. I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> oh, so pretty. I This does not pick up as well in pictures than I know it looks like in real life because she put it with all glitter on it. And I know that's very hard to pick up on the camera. I imagine this sparkles and shines. I'm very relaxed in my group. Not that I'm relaxed. My, my girls are that run the group. Um, we don't mind an extra picture here. This is the one that I wanted to talk about. Now this is book Moonlight Nightscapes. The designer is Kimberly Hawthorne. Medium is Calor Prisma Color Premier. Um, team colorist Sharon Myers. Look how gorgeous this picture is. Now, granted, it's very hard to screw up a Kimberly Hawthorne grayscale. I mean, she, Kimberly, is an amazing uh, designer. Um, if you have not looked her up or seen her work, I really, you're missing out because she does beautiful stuff. And uh, Sharon did a great job on this. I wanted to point out what I was seeing. Let me see if I can adjust this so that you can see the whole thing. No. Okay, here's most of it. Okay, we'll start from the bottom. See how shadowy this picture is? Now, it's backlit because the staircase comes down. 
and into a shaded area. And all the light is up there. Now, it's dark out. Um, supposed to be dark out. I would like to see the sky a little bit darker because it's got the moon there. And, or that could be the sun, but I think it's the moon. Because um, I sort of see some shading in it. You see my, yeah, you see my mouse. I can point. Okay, and the light is on here. So this should be a daylight picture. I mean, I'm sorry, a night picture. And the light is coming down here into some beautiful shadows. If you notice on here also, she backlit the trees. You see the white going around? That's a hard job. She did all of that. Negative space is a very difficult thing to do. When I was in art school, we actually had assignments that made us just do the negative space and leave this completely undone. Like this is the positive and where your focal point is. We had to leave that blank and just work on negative space. And it was a lot harder than you think. Backgrounds could be really boring. And a lot of people don't like doing backgrounds. The only thing I suggest to her is she's making the moon the focal point of the picture. It, your eye goes straight for the moon. And all this beautiful work in here becomes secondary because she's got this big bright blotch right there. The edge of the moon over here, it starts over here. I hope it picks up on camera, but it's way in here. This is way, 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 way too light. She needs to bring that fade back into the moon. And there's, uh, just keep bringing it down and the moon will become less of a focal point and a big gigantic white mass on the paper. And that's the only criticism I have. And it's not really criticism. It, it could be fixed. It's not going, ew, not good. That this one little thing is an easy fix. Um, if I was her also, go a little bit more dramatic. Take your fade all in here and just shrink up that moon. You know, you can even put a star or two in the sky to show what time of the day it is because it's kind of very bright and it could be the sun, but you know it's not the sun. It's backlit. It's beautifully lit. It, it, it would be... It's just a little bit confusing with this mass. So other than that, you did a great job. Really, you really did. Um, I really do ask for permission. Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> I love those cards. Bought this card today. Okay. Oh, nice one. I can go on this, like keep going, but I'm not going to because as I said, I don't have permission to film the everybody. So, okay. So let me turn this off. So I hope I, I pointed something out that you guys can actually use and because people make the same mistakes. Nobody, it's really funny because I can go onto my web, my uh, Facebook group and I could pick out pictures that every single person makes the same thing. But once you learn, that's not the way it should be in, re you know, in reality. And if you just tweak it up a little bit, then your pictures going forward are always going to be better. Um, the moon, like thinking just where the lighting goes in these, in these uh, pictures a little bit closer and making it more like just more what reality is. If you're going for that realistic look, which David and Sharon were going for, they were more, even though they're not realistically done, they're done realistically. Like we don't have a purple fox and we don't have, you know, uh, Swiss cheese coming down in the sky on Sharon's. So 
I hope you guys learned something. Now, what's going to go on from now on? I am back to teaching. I am. You're going to have two videos this week. I'm hopefully not going to miss weeks anymore. Um, unfortunately, when I was ready to come back, my dad got sick. He's doing much better. Um, the only thing he isn't doing anymore is driving. He's still a little bit, I don't trust his reaction time. But other than that, he's up and walking without a cane and, you know, everything is going good with, with him. And uh, I'm doing much better. I mean, you can hear it in my voice. You can, you can hear, like, everything about me is much better. Yeah, it's getting it's getting used to my new normal, but uh, becoming more of myself. And uh, I will see you guys in my next video. I promise I'm going to bring the drama. Bye-bye.